I'm Jody Wissing, and this is my awesome tiny home that I absolutely adore, and I'm excited to tell you about it. So, you know, I've been planning this for probably around four years, and I think a lot of it came out of a, a challenge that I did. I gave myself a few years back, and it was to not do any retail shopping for an entire year. Without, well, I could buy toiletries and, and food new, <laughs> nothing else new. Everything had to be either used, traded, borrowed, and it was just a huge lifestyle change. And I realized during that year that life was better. It was simple, it was, it was easy, and I needed to do more of that. So then I did a year of downsizing, which I blogged every day, got rid of one thing a day, every day for a year, and stuff depreciates 88% in case you need to know that. So just realizing that you don't have to have all this stuff and it's more about experiences versus consumerism and stuff. It's just a whole lot simpler and easier and happier lifestyles. I haven't named her yet. I'm up for suggestions. I am just starting. I've, I've lived in it for about a month and a half now. Downsized before that out of an 1800 square foot house into a smaller apartment while I was getting all of this done. So the apartment's around 500 square feet. First of all, I absolutely love tiny living. This has only been a month and a half, so everything that you're gonna see in here is, this is not anything of what it's gonna look like once, you know, a year from now, probably three weeks from now, who, who am I kidding? Um, I've had a lot of fun kind of getting everything together and did a lot of painting, so this, this was a, kind of, I guess what you would call a spec home. It had uh, all natural wood, everything was unfinished, and I don't care for unfinished wood all that much. I like paint, which you see my paint sign up there. <laughs> It, that had to be in here. That was like one of my non-negotiables. But I painted everything, stained all the wood, everything, and I'm still working on it. You can still see a couple of unfinished things because I, you know, only have limited amount of time. The kitchen space, I like it. I wish I had more counter space. I kind of knew what I was getting myself into. I don't love to cook. So with that being said, I like to grill. I like the outdoors. And I was trying to get the necessities in here that I needed. My coffee maker, that's my necessity. <laughs> um, the appliances are propane. I did get the upgraded ones. I, I love the fact that I have a gas stove because you can heat up tortillas. It just cooks really nice. The oven is a smaller size, so it's an RV size, but it's an, it's an upgraded one. And I researched the brand. I really liked it. I was on the fence with the microwave. I don't use it all that much. My friends talked me into it. Not sure I would do that again. I'd rather have a toaster oven up there. So I think I just bought into the peer pressure, which I usually don't do. And I got the microwave and I just, it's big. It takes up a lot of space and it's, you know, I'd much rather cook here and, and do this. And I, I, I love my toaster oven. I miss my toaster oven. I do have a little one in the cabinet over there that I use. But uh, the refrigerator is a great size. It's a midsize and it holds a lot more than it even looks like. But I really love it. But yeah, I just wish I had more counter space. I would probably like that. And I do have plans to do that. Uh, I wanted to get the undermount sink. I want to get the stone countertops. These look stone, but it's only because I painted them that way. <laughs> but I'm either going to do a flip up counter piece right here, which I thought would be perfect, or I'll end up doing more of an L shape and kind of figuring out the staircase, doing something a little different with that. I always, I always thought that I would do something, you know, again, buying things. It, it saved me some money just buying this as a shell, but the place has great bones. So I want to be able to modify it when I, when I have the time and the money, because I like doing a lot of that work myself. You know, I was really nervous about the whole storage thing, not living tiny before. I wasn't sure how it was gonna work with the storage. And this has surprisingly been really great. I have, you know, you have your typical cleaning supplies and things under here. I have a little dish strainer because there's not a lot of counter space. So when I'm washing dishes, I have to do that. I've never been one to use a dishwasher. All my dishwashers would like die because I didn't use them and all the gaskets would go bad. The pump would go bad because I never used it. So every time I sold a house, I had to buy a new dishwasher. <laughs> but yeah, this is working perfectly. The, um, I had the drawer base put in over here. So, you know, all my utensils and everything, you have that. And you don't have a junk drawer. 
So it becomes a utility drawer because you have to be very intentional about what you put in there. So I have batteries, I have some tools because I'm working on the house right now. I have a lot of things in here that, that are very functional and that you have to have. So yeah, the junk drawer thing doesn't work. But yeah, it's been sufficient. You know, it's all about utilizing the space that you have. So I'm able to keep all my spices and stuff up here. These little things are the greatest thing ever. You can use them to be a spoon rest. You can use them for sauces. You can use them for little plates when you're snacking. They're just the most functional things ever. All my utensils are here and you know I just have minimal dishes you don't have to have a lot and then I of course have my island over here so all of my food and everything is under here pots and pans because I have Le Creuset and they weigh a ton um, they're over here this is on wheels so it's great I can move this around and I have stools so that also is my kitchen table so it actually works really well again would like a little more counter space but this is nice when I am cooking you know on that rare occasion maybe Thanksgiving or something. <laughs> Move this right in here and it's really great because you still have all the counter space and eventually I'll probably add some flip ups on here too and that'll give me more counter space as well. I also thought about doing some sort of countertop or something in front of the window that would flip up or that I could, I just haven't designed it yet, but it's coming. It's pretty visible when you come from down, from upstairs. I'm actually using that right now. Because we don't need a lot of heat here, this has the baseboard heat system. They build these in Wisconsin. I don't utilize the baseboard heat. It's propane and I, you know, don't want to use up all my propane. So that seems to be a lot easier and it's very right. efficient. It, it heats the place really well. Keep the fan on reverse and that way it just drops all the heat down. But it's it's been sufficient. If it gets super cold, then I can turn on the, the baseboard. But it's it I was really surprised. Insulation completely matters in these things. Spray foam insulation is the best. Don't go any other way. It is fabulous. And when they delivered this from Wisconsin, it was hot here and it was cold in Wisconsin. And they opened the door and it was a two day trip. They opened the door and it was freezing in here. Like it held everything in, it was amazing. So I'm huge, huge, huge fan. But yeah, the, the, even the air conditioner on that works great. I, I have to have a fan in my room just because it's, when I'm sleeping, you know, it, it does get a little bit warm upstairs, but the fan just keeps the air circulating. So it's nice. Well, I have to say the book thing I found on Pinterest. I, I get books out of dumpsters and I use books as Legos. So a lot of these, I've had book walls in my house. I haven't had really a chance to do much of anything with one here. So I'm just using them for decor until I really figure out what I wanna do. I still wanna keep that kind of clean look. But this is really great. I do have a lot of books that I wanna access and that I wanna be able to get to. So it's really great. I just use my stool. I dump up here, I can easily get to my books. And it's a great, again, I saw this on Pinterest, so I just got the Ikea bookshelf for now. I have every intention of making this custom. It'll go all the way to the edge and I'll be able to just fill the whole thing up with books. And there's books on the other side too that I'll show you. So the living room right now, this is a good example of when you are deciding to go tiny, to not get rid of anything until you get the space you're gonna live in because you will get rid of things that you wish you had kept and a lot of the things that you keep you're gonna need to get rid of so this is a great example of that my decor in my house that I moved out of was much more rustic industrial I suppose and so I don't feel like this really matches in here but you know it's a piece of furniture and it's not a bare wall right now so that that will change out but it can it all needs to happen progressively it's really hard to part with things that you really love and you know, to, to do it all at once, it doesn't feel right. So if you take it and you really make it a process, take, take a couple passes at it, get rid of some things. There, there are things you'll be able to get rid of really easily. And then there's things that, you know, you have to go through three or four passes to go, okay, I really don't need this. And then you can get rid of it and it's, you don't hate yourself for getting rid of it. <laughs> but I do have to, I, I like being surrounded with things that I love. And so this, you know, there's a lot of things that I have that have a story. This mask came from Africa on, when I was in on a trip over there and I just love this thing. We've named him Humpty Dumpty because I can't tell you how many times he's fallen off the wall and he's been glued back together again. You can see he's missing a piece right now that I still need to glue back on. But yeah, Humpty Dumpty, he falls off. And I actually put an LED light behind him so he glows at night. It's really creepy. And then in the living room, again, I just have a lot of things that just haven't been able to part with yet. One thing that, again, non-negotiable in my tiny house was 
my piece of scrap metal. I know this is really ridiculous. It was my centerpiece on my dining room table when I had my house. And it's just, I love the color of it. I, it has a story behind it of where I found it and some silos. And my friends, of course, gave me a hard time about it, about taking it. But my kitchen cabinet color was matched off of this. So I absolutely love it. It's a great piece has my TV remote in it right now. <laughs> my couch is kind of an interesting story. When I was in my house, I love having a big sofa and I like having a deep sofa. It's really great. I found this crappy looking thing on Craigslist. My kids have the other piece of it. It's a giant sectional, but it's really deep and it really needs to be recovered. But I was really excited that I could fit a piece of it in here because it's deep. You could, I could even, you know, somebody that's not super tall can sleep on it if I need to use it for that. Eventually what I'll do is I'll repurpose all the cushions from the sofa. My kids are still using the other part, like I said. I'll repurpose this and I'll build a base for it that has storage in it, but keep the cushions because I just love the style and I love that. I just need to have them recovered but I was a little bit excited. This is the first one of these units that they put the patio doors in and you know, it kind of covers up part of it, but it's not horrible. So I, I like it. And when I, when I rebuild it, I'll probably take the arm off and just keep it kind of open. So you get more of the, the outside view. It just, I like all the windows. It brings the outside in and it's really great. And when you paint the ceilings dark, everybody was like, oh, it's going to feel so small. And like, well, it's a tiny house. It's supposed to feel small <laughs> and cozy. So I did go white on the walls, but I did go dark on the ceiling. And when you do that, it kind of, because you know, dark obviously absorbs light, it takes the ceiling away. So you get the feeling of a much bigger space, even though the ceiling is six, six, I believe. So I can touch it. <laughs> I'll, I haven't had any of my tall friends come in and say that they were uncomfortable in here. Everybody's been able to walk under it and it's been great. Probably just this for storage. I think you'll, baskets are a great thing. You can use these for all kinds of storage. I don't, I'm still working on the whole storage thing, especially with my clothing. Right now I have some throw blankets in here, which are great to have during the winter. In the summer, I'll probably take those out, maybe use the space for something else. Right now I have my scarves and all of my accessories, my warm weather accessory, cold weather accessories, I guess you'd call it in here. But these baskets are really great. You can put towels in them. You can just, you know, I have one for my shoes because I have crazy, no landscaping out there yet. So it's like living at the beach right now and you just track everything in so I have a couple plastic buckets put the shoes in but they're really functional and you can move them around easily if you need the space I have a closet it's very small I have to move my cushion to be able to open it right now you'll see I have a little pull thing this is another one of my future projects when you see this again it will have a nice frame around it and it will have artwork in it so it's gonna look like a piece of artwork that opens up that'll happen eventually so this is all the closet space I have I haven't even filled it up. This is what's crazy about it. You know, when, once you downsize and you realize you just, you know, you, you have to really plan your wardrobe and like I buy a pair of pants, they're hiking pants, they're moisture wicking hiking pants, but they look dressy. So I wear them to work. I have business casual at work and I can wear them on my time off. They're, you know, whatever they work with everything. So you try to get really intentional about your wardrobe. And so this is actually working for me. I still need to get everything a little bit more organized and probably downsize my wardrobe a little bit more, but this has been really great. And I have to say, if you have a tiny house, a vacuum that can, it, this has a million attachments, so I can use it as a floor vac. I can use it as a hand vac. It's got the beater bar on it because when you go upstairs into the loft, you can't have a full size vacuum. So this is a must have. This space right here, if you watch any kind of tiny house shows, you know that they have the, the artwork that folds it down into a table. Well, that's going to happen at some point. This will be a giant piece of artwork that will fold down into a table. I think that's just a great use of space. It's aesthetically pleasing and I will eventually have that. And so there's some drawers under here, which are really great. So I have storage, I can keep my electronics. I have, I'm a cyclist, so I keep my cycling equipment. I have camera equipment. So I have place for everything. It's really great. So come on upstairs. So the ceiling is obviously a little smaller up here, but I don't have to crawl. So that's kind of nice. I can, I can sit up here easily. Actually, you know, if you have anything that's a chair height, which this table is a chair height, I can sit on this. It works really great. And this is really big up here. I, it would fit a king size bed, which is what I had. However, it took up the entire space and I just didn't love it. My mattress was old and needed to be replaced anyway. So I'm using my kid's twin mattress right now until I 
upgrade my bed and get my big girl bed. Yeah, so I put in some lighting around here, the little copper wire lights. So it really gives some nice ambient light at night. I have a great view. I've gotten really, I hit the jackpot when it came to the property because I'm able to see the lake from here, even though I'm not on the lake. Uh, it's really great. And I wanted the, the bedroom space to feel cozy. I love the windows. It's really great. I can get a great cross draft when the weather's nice and it's, it's really great. I have all my journals and everything over here. Ikea makes some really good storage solutions, I have to say. <laughs> so put that over here. I did go with the outlets that have USBs in them so I can charge my phone. I can charge all my devices. It runs the, the lights and all of that runs off solar panels that are on the roof so that's kind of nice too one of the nice things is is these are blackout blinds so at night you know now that it's winter and all the leaves are off the trees there's a lot more street lights that are noticeable and that kind of thing so this just blacks it out really nicely and yeah over here i have you know the books that i like to read again storage bins are your friend <laughs> have all my coats in here i have some coats in here and this also has shoes in the bottom of it you can see i have shoes over there got the little dresser so that works great with all of my clothing i've got some baskets that are over here that are again i just keep all my camping gear in there and everything. I've got books on the other side of the bookcase and I was able to keep all my Persian rugs, which was really nice. <laughs> so I was able to work these into the tiny house and luckily I had some smaller sized ones that, that all work. It's really great at night. It's just the nice ambient light that you get. Of course, I have all the LEDs up here. So, you know, when I want to light up the whole place, I can and it's beautiful. And it's a little bit with all the windows I laugh and make jokes about. It's like living in a fish aquarium. And people drive by, of course, it's a tiny house and nobody's seen it so I can't even tell you how many times people stop in front of my house and take pictures and they're you know just almost wrecked because they're <laughs> they're having to stop and look at it it's kind of funny so I have to be really careful at night to make sure that I close the blinds <laughs> as you can see right in yeah those patio doors you can see straight in <laughs> everything <laughs> so this is kind of interesting this is again one of those things where I want to keep this stuff I like being surrounded by the things that I like and these cans were, were a great example of that so I'm I'm thinking well I've got to do something with them and so they hold art supplies and pens and this little shelf unit I had pegs up here when I first got it and I'm not the hang your coat at the door kind of person you know occasionally I might do that so I can use these pegs but I always lose my keys and I have to have keys to the Connex to the Airstream to all these different things so to have them all in one place is great but I didn't like the look of the, the ugly thermostat so the shelf unit covers up the thermostat at, and the split system has a remote which I keep in this little eyeglass case and keep it over there so yeah it's just kind of fun keep my little speaker because you know when you have a tiny house you have to have a tiny speaker for when you're listening to things so it's just it's really functional and I can keep stuff here this has been a really great thing because shoes I probably I know I have a shoe issue I have too many pairs of shoes and I really need to work on that but until I do I have this which is really great you have to have a place first of all to charge all your stuff so this has charging in it for all my bike lights anything that needs charging there's a charging station for batteries everything's in there it's all set up this little basket right here is really great because you have to have a place to throw your mail and throw all your crap when you know it's kind of I guess a junk drawer in in essence but it's not because it's visible so I'll keep it clean <laughs> I don't want anybody looking at that mess but having the shoes down here is really great having the little shoe rack some of the ones I wear more frequently I keep here the other ones I'll keep you know I have another closet over here I'll keep those or in my clothing closet so yeah I still need to get rid of some shoes but until then I have this so I do have a little bit of storage over here which again in lieu of counter space but and I just finished painting the cabinet so I haven't put the hardware back on yet but this is really great just to have some additional storage um, and again I haven't quite figured it out this is food and wine <laughs> um, have the little toaster oven in here I still need to run the electrical into the cabinet so as soon as I do that which will probably happen this week I'll be able to use that and it has enough clearance and then just additional space to keep you know appliances whatever you need I keep shoes down here I keep my cycling equipment down there so I have easy access to it this up here is right now my compost bin and 
my coffee grinder that will not fit on the cabinet. I have to use these little pods, but they're not plastic pods. They're just paper pods, so they're all compostable. It's great. Um, but yeah, I can just keep miscellaneous stuff up here and, you know, eventually this will be organized when, you know, when I figure out. Again, the whole storage thing is a whole process, so. <laughs> and the bathroom so this model you could get either a full-size tub or you could get a shower so i got the shower package which came with shelves which is really nice i did get the frosted glass door which is wonderful because it brings all the light in when you're in here in the daytime and even at night you still get ambient light from out there and so it doesn't feel as small and so the shelves are really great I am so glad that I went with the shelves. These are, they're a little cramped and a little bit hard to get to with the toilet being there, but I have to keep all my camping equipment. It's all climate controlled. So you don't want, you know, your tents will disintegrate if you put them in the Texas heat. So all of my camping equipment's on a shelf. Then I have, you know, additional storage and towels. Then on the other thing, I have all my toiletries and everything and some additional storage and bins in the back. I have a laundry bin that has more shoes behind it. <laughs> And then I haven't even done anything with the bottom yet, but I do have two cats that will eventually be moving in when my kids transition out of, out of their apartment. So that's probably going to be the litter box space unless I put in a pet door, which could be an option as well because that's kind of cramped and I'm not sure I want to deal with that. So again, this space, I, I said I bought builder's grade kind of things. When you see this next, you will see a nice, beautiful blue vessel sink gonna have stone countertops. I do want to build some sort of probably shelving units on here just to have a little bit of additional storage. You know I've got the cabinets which are still the natural wood. I haven't painted those yet. I did find the mirror I was looking for. I do want to eventually do like the brick veneer. So this this back wall will be all brick veneer and you know so this will look different and it's all a process. <laughs> I do love the combo washer dryer. Learning a lot about this, it works completely differently than the conventional ones. I put a pair of shoes in there that had leather inserts in them and because of the way the dryer works, they came out with the little leather inserts were like dog rawhide shoes. <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's a little bit of learning, learning curve with it. It takes longer, but it's very efficient and I really like it. It's not like I have huge amounts of laundry. You know, when you downsize your wardrobe, you just don't have as much to wash and there's not these big piles of laundry everywhere. You just do a little bit here and there and it works absolutely great. This is one of the coolest things I found. So up here, there's this little bar and it pops out and you can put your, you hang your clothes on it. It works really great. So when you're doing laundry, you can take everything out of the dryer, put it up there on hangers, leave it there for a while. And then when you want it to look nice, you just close it back up and you're done. And so it's finding things like that that just make tiny living really easy and really great. So I decided, you know, when you're, when you're deciding on upgrades, there's a few things that you know, in retrospect, I might've changed a couple of things, but I'm pretty pleased with all the upgrades that, that I did. And one of them is the tankless water heater. That, that's my favorite thing. If there was nothing else I could have upgraded, I would totally do that. It's in the cabinet right here. And I had it put over there so I could keep underneath the shelf over here open for the cat box. But this is, oh my gosh, it's just like endless hot water and it works great and it's super efficient. So I'm, I'm excited about that. That's probably one of my favorite things. So we have the pull out ladder which is nice because it makes it easier to climb up. The only problem is, is somebody can't come in the door now. So this is the loft. Most of my friends call it the tree house. So it does feel like a tree house up here. It's a really great view and it's, you know, you have to sit on the floor, it's awesome. Because my friends call it the tree house, I want to get a big giant tree branch and put some of those little copper wire lights on it. So it will probably take up some of the space over here, over the kitchen, and I'll have it come out because you can't really walk out there without, you know, a death wish. <laughs> there's, there's no safety railings. And the one time I did walk out there, I hit my head on the ceiling fan. So it's not pleasant. This is kind of an additional space. I'm up for ideas on what this will be. Eventually, I think it'll maybe a little bit of an art studio. My son may actually live up here for a period of 
of time and you know it's just a great extra space to have you can have some extra storage I don't want to put anything big and bulky up here because I really love the openness and the windows and I get great light in here all day long so it's it's really wonderful right now I have a bookcase up here it can go across here and become a safety railing because I don't really don't have a safety railing I like the cable railings but that wasn't an option on these so in here I have a bunch of storage I've got cycling clothing you know nothing much up here right now I keep some of my additional camera equipment for now it's again just some storage and eventually this will be you know something more useful than just storage i try not to store stuff where you can't see it too i feel like that's part of the problem we have with houses is you start storing all of your stuff and when you can't see it it's out of sight out of mind and truly you start looking through stuff and it's like oh i don't even remember that i had that if you don't remember you had it you probably don't need it and so i i want to get to a point where everything i have is super accessible i know what it is the only thing that that i am realizing i've never been one of those store all your summer clothes keep all your winter clothes out and then flip-flop it I've never been one of those people but with the tiny space you kind of do have to do that so I have one bin with my summer clothes in it right now and I try to again buy things that are functional that I can wear you know the t-shirt that I'm wearing is a summer t-shirt as well I can put a sweater over it it now becomes winter so there are some some flexibilities that you can do there but I want to be able to see everything that I have if I have stuff that's in storage I probably don't need it. This lamp I bought at a thrift store for three dollars and it's an original like Ames era kind of you know mid-century modern. The shade color probably doesn't work so much in here now but I love the lamp. It needs to be painted and everything but this is a table lamp and it works perfect up here as a floor lamp. <laughs> so you know it's again the, those things that you think you might get rid of and it's like okay there's no way that's going to fit in the tiny house that ended up working perfectly so I'm really glad that I didn't get rid of it and you know a lot of my friends wanted to take that off my hands but I'm glad I kept it well now that you've seen the inside we can go outside and take a look okay all right let's check out outside as you can see I still have a big mess I have a lot of landscaping to do the final plan will be xeriscaping with dark it's called Tejas black rock so it'll be like these small inch or smaller size rocks it'll be very modern looking landscape and I plan to build a deck out here but I wanted to kind of again just get settled before I start building infrastructure and and figuring out exactly what I want to do out here. The siding I love on here is the shoshugi bun and so it's where they burn the wood so I don't ever have to stain this if I don't want to. The maintenance on it is zero. If I do want to stain it to make it a color which you know with me could happen at some point <laughs> but it looks gorgeous without it and it, it really brings out the wood tones and it's, it gives it a nice warm warm look yet yeah, modern look. This is again one of those things when you when you look at going tiny of repurposing things this is a great example of that. So I bought this bed on Craigslist. I absolutely love my canopy bed. Obviously it's not gonna fit in a tiny house. So I've repurposed it for out here. I've ordered lights to go on it. This is gonna be like an outdoor kitchen. And because these railings are seat height, I'll be able to build like a little bench around it and I can put either a table in there or something like that. But this will be repurposed to, to my outdoor living space, which is, I was really excited about that because I didn't want to get rid of it. And so I have my composting Death Star over here. <laughs> it's really great. And all of this stuff on the, on the tiny house, I've got the batteries, I've got the, the outside of the split system, the propane tanks, everything's over here. At some point I'll probably do like a little fence around it so you don't see all the septic and all this stuff but I do have something really unique planned for around back so you know standard RV hookups and because this is on the back side you know not as aesthetically pleasing but I have something really great and this is the outdoor shower kit that I could put on here and because I have the endless hot water with my great hot water thing I bought a bathtub that I will put out here so I'll have an outdoor shower and an outdoor bathtub and I'm looking at it's a typical house small size jacuzzi tub but I'm going to insulate it and build privacy fence around here so I will have an outdoor shower and an outdoor bathtub and it's going to be really great so it's the nice thing about the bathtub is, is you know I, I've had hot tubs love my hot tub I had a very efficient one a soft tub if you're familiar with those they're really great because they're always hot they're always ready to get in and because they're efficient they don't use any electricity basically so this is going to be really great because I don't have the maintenance of it I'll just be able to say hey I want to go 
outside and take a bath and be able to do that. No maintenance, no keeping up with chemicals or anything like that. You can use it whenever I want. Septic, so, you know, all the septic has to be approved. You have to get permits and everything. And so because I have an RV and I have a shipping container that's an art studio, I was able to get a septic that is a drip system. You have to get an aerobic system now. If you're not familiar with those, you will be if you need to get one. They're very expensive, but it's almost like having your own water sewage treatment plant and it puts the treated water back into your landscaping. So where most of them have sprinkler heads, I have a smaller size one that is made for RV parks, RV type, type applications. So I have a drip field. So you can see the septic back there. I tried to put it as far away because you can't drive over it. And the septic field is all back here behind the tiny house, which is great because you can't drive on it. It has to be grass. So yeah, eventually I'll put grass in because right now everything's mud. So this will be grass back here. And then the septic basically will keep the grass watered. So I don't, in Texas, that's a big thing because we don't have, you know, endless resources of water. Most of the time we're in drought season. So this will take care of the grass part that I have the rock will be its own thing it'll be it'll be perfect so it's a really it's a great setup okay so this was the first one of these models that they put the patio doors on which I thought was really great they make a model now where it has the the deck and all of that stuff which would have been great but you know they cost money so <laughs> right now it's the door to nowhere and eventually I'll put the put a deck out here I've got my fire pit over here I've got everything and it's really great because I can see the lake from here and when I put this in just because this is an RV I don't want to do any permanent structure. I want to be able to have it floating. So the deck that I build will be just as movable as this unit. Not easily, but you will be able to move it. So it'll be on, on concrete pillars and I'll just build the deck that way. You know, occasionally it'll have to be leveled like anything else in Texas. We have terrible soil and foundation problems. So at least with a tiny house, I don't have to deal with foundation problems anymore. It's kind of nice. Or squirrels in my attic because I don't have an attic. So this is the Connex and I mean, it doesn't have a name other than Connex. I guess I need to name it to blue because I'm going to keep it blue in the process of construction right now with this inside of this will be a, a art studio and probably two-thirds of this will be art studio the rest of it is storage which you'll get to see in a few minutes this is a really great thing I was going to buy a shipping container just for storage I was gonna buy a 20 foot 20 foot shipping container just to store my bikes my kayaks you know I have a pretty active lifestyle and you need places for that you need to have a little bit of storage so I was going to do that and then my neighbors said, well, why don't you just buy ours? And I looked at it and I said, wow, because it's a lot bigger than what I really need. <laughs> So that's kind of how the art studio came about. They had already built it into a room. It already had plumbing, it already had electrical, it had everything in it. I got a screaming deal on it because I think they wanted to kind of get rid of it. It worked for me to buy it. So yeah, it was it was really great. And so working on the inside right now, it's to come. You can see that at some point. Eventually I'd like to put a rooftop deck up here and with a spiral staircase over on the side so you can get up there. It's a really great view from up on top and, and I absolutely Absolutely love it. It's going to be wonderful. So if you'd like to take a look at the storage part of this. So this is the storage part. Turn the light on so you can see. I'd open that other door, but it'll hit my car. <laughs> So clean this out so far and still have a lot of work to do to it. I'm doing a reclaimed wood wall on the back here. My bikes will hang up, the kayaks. Right now I'm storing my friend's kayak as well. And but this is just a really useful space to be able to have eventually. I can, you know, put welding equipment in here and woodworking equipment and all kinds of fun stuff if I want to do that. It's really great and it's a great art space too. Until I get the inside made into the studio, this is kind of more of a messy art place. You know, I can do the stuff where I can throw paint all over the walls and it's, you know, it's totally fine because it's a mess anyway. But yeah, it's just a great space and you, you do need to have some type of storage, you know, so it's depending on what you need to store. Having kayaks, obviously those are big. Being a cyclist and I do, you know, bike touring, that kind of thing. You have to have a place for some of that stuff. So even though it's not a lot of stuff, you still do have to have a place for it. And I have to be able to lock this stuff up too. Yeah, if you'd like to check out more information, I know I talked about blogging, the no retail shopping, and the year of downsizing and I have a lot of that on my blog it's not super easy 
to find right now, so I will work on that. But if you'd like to go to it, it's right now it's at jodywissing.com. It's J-O-D-Y-W-I-S-S-I-N-G.com. And you can go there and find all the crazy stuff that I do. And hopefully I'm gonna start blogging again. It's It's been a little while since I've had time to do it, which is the whole purpose of going tiny is that I'm gonna have a lot more time on my hands once I finish all the 8,000 projects that I've told you about. <laughs> and one of the other places that I feel like has been really helpful for me, I, I've been binging this podcast, Radical Personal Finance. Uh, the guy that does it just goes on these crazy rabbit trails about living differently and, and not falling into the traps of consumerism and doing what everybody else tells you you should be doing. Don't get the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's really great and it's radical personal finance I think the radical personal finance.com is his his website this guy's name is Joshua sheets but he has done like 600 episodes and they are all there's probably a lot of them that really about living differently and living just doing things tiny living frugally it's not all about I mean at the bottom bottom line is it is about finance but it's also about just living differently being content with the things that you have it really falls into the whole tiny living concept. It's, it's amazing. <music>